Mappy was first introduced to the world of gaming in 1983 when he debuted in his self-titled action platforming game, brought to us by the good folks at Namco. While never quite as iconic or popular as Pac-Man, Mappy was a big hit at the time of its release, and the cat-busting police mouse is one of the company's most beloved characters. A port of the game was made for Nintendo's Famicom in 1984, which unfortunately was never published outside of Japan. But in all honesty, it's not that much of a loss, since Mappy has also been ported to seemingly every gaming platform ever made, in some form or another. A few sequels made in the 80s expanded upon the franchise further, one of which was the console-only Mappy Land. Published for the Famicom in 1986, this game jazzed things up a bit in terms of graphics and gameplay mechanics, but without straying too much from the basic setup of the original Mappy. And unlike its predecessor, Mappy Land did eventually see an international release for the NES in 1989. In North America, anyway. While Americans and Canadians were finally getting a chance to enjoy that game, a second console-only exclusive was published in Japan, where it would sadly remain. Mappy Kids for the Famicom marks a huge departure from the formula established with the original Mappy and Mappy Land. It's still an action platformer, but has more in common with games like Super Mario Bros. or Chippendale Rescue Rangers and its prequels. In fact, I'd say the only thing that really links it with the other Mappy games is its cast of characters. That's not to say it's such a bad thing, as the drastic change in gameplay and design ended up being for the best in my opinion, and Mappy Kids is a lot of fun in a solid 8-bit platformer. Rather than starring Mappy, this game is all about Happy, Mappy's son. Hence the kids part of the title. Happy is quite nimble and has a variety of moves in his arsenal that makes his policeman dad look kind of like a fat lazy joke in comparison. While Mappy was pretty much limited to just running around and hopping on and off trampolines, Happy can run, duck, and jump, and repeatedly mashing down the jump button makes him slow down his descent with some tail spinning action. And unlike his old man, who could only combat his adversaries indirectly with the help of microwave power doors, whatever that means. Happy takes his enemies head on with a mighty little kick that sends most baddies flying off screen. This attack will take down anything it hits with a single strike, though it takes a little getting used to with the timing for some foes. The Pine Sized Heroes Adventure takes place over 15 levels set in a large human world and the goal of each one is to collect as much money and jewelry as possible before reaching the end of the stage. That might sound a bit like Capcom's DuckTales, but there is an actual point in collecting the cash here in Mappy Kids, which we'll talk about in just a minute. All levels only scroll left and right, and aside from enemies and money, are filled with environmental hazards, some of which strike without warning, as well as a variety of different power-ups and items to be picked up. Kicking open little pink treasure chests will reveal one of three things, a ring or a jewel, which add to the money pool, or a pair of roller skates that increase movement speed in the distance of jumps. Destroying blocks will sometimes yield a t-shirt that makes Happy invincible, life hearts which restore health, a money bag worth big bucks, or the classic Namco special flag icon, which acts as a 1-up. Additionally, there are 100 yen coins scattered about in each level which are acquired by simply touching them. Getting hit by an enemy or stage hazard will send poor Happy tumbling around, causing him to lose health and a decent chunk of cash as well. Thankfully, you have the chance to get back your lost money after recovering. In most cases. There is no time limit, so playing these levels can be taken at your own leisure. All of the stages are pretty well designed, though some of the visuals are kind of bland or questionable. For example, this poster featuring a football player named Mr. Sweetness. I'm not a big sports guy, but I do know that Chicago Bears running back Walter Payton's nickname was Sweetness, his jersey number was 34, and he's definitely not a white guy. Anyway, back on topic. You may be wondering why collecting money is such an important component to Mappy Kids. Well, one day Happy receives a letter from his father stating that he wants to introduce him to a cute young mouse girl named Picky for him to marry, and to come on over to his place where he and the bride-to-be are waiting. He also has one other request, however, and that is for Happy to build a splendid house, presumably for him and Picky to live in after they wed. 
Happy starts off with an empty plot of land, and must gradually build up his house over the course of the game by purchasing parts at a store in between each stage. What store is run by animals, accepts human money, and deals in tiny mouse-sized house parts is beyond me, but hey, it's a video game. Some parts are pretty cheap, like dandelions at a picket fence. But others are quite pricey, including a car, the house itself, and even the sun. Again, it's a video game. Collecting each piece of jewelry, money bag, and yen coin in every stage will cover the cost for all these parts and then some. So this task is easy, right? Well, no. And here's why. Before Happy gets the chance to visit the store and purchase anything, he must participate in a minigame, conducted by Mappy's old nemesis Nyamko, known as Goro internationally. There are three different types. A game where players must follow Nyamko's commands raising and lowering red and white flags. A booty bumping sumo style wrestling match which involves mashing down the A button to attack and holding B to defend. And a spot the difference game featuring a couple of classic Namco characters. A slot machine will select one of three different cat opponents, and each is particularly skilled in one of the minigames. Challenging a cat in the minigame he or she specializes in will make winning a lot tougher if facing one of the other two. The prize at stake is also determined by a slot machine. And there are some good rewards, like receiving 50,000 yen, bonus lives, or house part. But the most common prize is a single 100 yen coin. Lame. As they say, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. And in Mappy Kids, Nyamko is Lord. Because of that, losing in any minigame carries a heavy penalty. Depending on what reward is up for grabs, Mappy can lose a lot of cash, in some cases the entire bank, as well as hard-earned house parts. Stopping on a skull icon is an instant penalty which takes away 20,000 yen, or causes an earthquake that randomly destroys house parts, the latter being really frustrating if and when it happens. Adding to the frustration is that if you don't know what you're doing in the minigames, you're going to lose often, and that means no completed house. The Spot the Difference game is really easy in my opinion, and booty sumo matches usually just devolve into pushing right and mashing the A button mindlessly. But sometimes that's not enough, and learning the ins and outs of the block technique is necessary. And just kiss your money and house parts goodbye if you play the flag raising game and don't read Japanese. Even if you do read Japanese, it can still be a little tricky. Mappy Kids is a pretty short game, and completing it will only take about one hour. Reaching the end of the game with an incomplete house results in the bad ending, where Picky lives up to her name and rejects Happy, and Mappy berates his son for his shortcomings as a man. However, if Happy's house is complete... All parties are satisfied, and you are rewarded with a happy ending. But honestly, is it really a happy ending? Can our hero Happy really be content with someone as shallow as this hussy Picky, who only wants to be with him because of his nice things? Nah, I'd say the bad ending is the better one personally. In the immortal words of the late great rapper Big L, Aside from the single player campaign, there's a split screen two player mode where one person takes control of Happy and the other his twin brother Rappy. Mappy Kids pits the brothers against each other in a competition to win the heart of Picky and the ultimate sibling rivalry, tearing up the concept of bros before hoes completely in half. The levels are now filled with even more treasure boxes, money, and enemies, and sometimes there's so much happening on screen that this mode feels like complete chaos. The brothers can attack each other with their kicks, and when one of the tiny mice is knocked over, the other has the opportunity to steal his dropped money. You can even kick enemies at the other player to attack, 
which in turn can be kicked back to you. Player 2 now takes over for the CPU during minigames, and the prizes have been changed to allow the players to trade or steal house parts from each other. The two-player campaign is a little shorter than the main one, and the brother who has the nicer house at the end wins the girl. Overall, Mappy Kids is a short, sweet game that I recommend to anyone with a Famicom. It's got a lot of charm, and most importantly, loads of fun to be had, especially with the multiplayer. The package design is really well done. Gotta love that clamshell case and the wonderful cover art. It even comes with a sheet of stickers that you'll never dare to use. If you want this game but you're a cheapskate, I wouldn't give a chick 10 cent to put cheese on a whopper. No worries, because Mappy Kids is relatively inexpensive, and a complete inbox copy shouldn't set you back more than 20 US dollars. The cartridge is a little bigger than standard Famicom ones, due to a sound chip inside that enhances the game audio. So if you use an adapter to play Japanese games on the NES, be aware of that. And speaking of enhanced audio, Big thanks to my buddy Nico the Wii Guy for providing the stereo remixes of the Mappy Kids soundtrack used in this video. You can hear some great stereo versions of your favorite 8-bit gems on his main channel, or check out his Gaming Going Gone one for more in-depth video gaming content, similar to what I do. For the love of science, do it! Anyway, this is Jimmy Hoppa from Import Gaming for the Win, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. As always, thank you for watching and until next time, take care.